Hey guys, just had Catherine Tune on again. Second time I've had her on the podcast. Uh, we talked about her book, Marked by Love. I pulled that up and show it to you. Marked by Love, it might be backwards, I don't know. It's the extended, expanded version, about 100 pages more with a, a pretty deep appendix. She goes deep into some of the theological stuff. But I love talking with Catherine. I'm, we've, we've gotten to know each other over the last couple of years. Um, she's, I, and I said it in the front end, she's like a sister who grew up in the same family, has some of the same language, same understandings of the love of God. So whenever I talk with her, I just feel this connection, the synergy. I, uh, and this was no different. Uh, we went through the book. In fact, before uh, she got on, we were talking, and I, I sometimes will ask folks, is there anything we want to dive into or anything you specifically outside of? We knew we were going to go into the book. And she said, no, I feel like uh, I feel like God's just uh, going to connect some dots. I think that's what we did. We, we worked through the book. We worked through the measureless, infinite nature of the love of God, which starts with chapter one, the epicenter of the universe work through the whole book about who we are, about you know, living from rest. You know, she has uh, at the end, freaky rest, but we're the object of God's passion. Um, just diving into the perfection of his love and our identity as his beloved. Uh, I want to read a, a little bit about Catherine. I think she, she is a walking invitation into a freedom, a healing and wholeness. In fact, I, I'm going to read off her website. Uh, it's time to lay toxic religion down and experience healing, wholeness, and freedom. It's time for you to experience again, or maybe for the first time, how absolutely adored you are by God, love himself. It's time to experience God as he really is and gain new perspectives of his goodness and loveliness in fresh and life-giving ways. And that, that's pulled off of her website, uh, catherinetune.com. I recommend you go there and check out every resource she has, including this book, Marked by Love. But that's what this conversation was. It was just an invitation into new perspectives of his goodness. Uh, I loved it. I loved connecting with her again. And I think this will bless you. In other news, conference is coming. It's getting closer. August 15 through 19, there's still space. Uh, Baxter Kruger will be there with us. Felicia Morrell, uh, if you are familiar, she is uh, amazing. Another person that I feel like we speak the same language. Dub Alexander, Michael Wallace will be leading worship. Brooke Waters will be there, and, and uh, myself. Uh, along with a whole lot of fun folks and friends, and uh, uh, just excited about this. I'm excited uh, Derek will be with us. And, uh, co-hosting with me some of the panels just uh, we're gonna have a good time good time in the love of God uh, August 15 through 17 if you can't make it it is gonna be live streaming and those uh, videos will be available afterwards as well you can learn all about this at a family story.org a family story.org is also where you can give we're listener supported and incredibly grateful when you partner with us that way it's also where you can sign up for our mailing list. And I recommend this. It uh, will keep you up to speed on all things family story, all things tacos, um, books, conferences, Zoom calls. We have um, a new site we're launching soon that will show where uh, we have Zoom communities meeting. And you'll be able to track that better. And guys like Dale Howie, who have been hosting uh, Zoom meetings uh, for the podcast listeners for the last, oh my goodness, months, if not getting on a year. Um, beautiful community taking place. Also, you can discover that community on Facebook. We have a Rethinking God with Tacos community on Facebook. I'd recommend signing up there, Instagram. And if you uh, would like, share uh, and retweet and uh, all of the uh, social media ways by which to let folks know about the podcast, we'd be grateful. Love, love doing this. It's life given to me, and it's been really amazing to connect with friends and new family members. Uh, this is my conversation with Catherine Toon. Uh, I think it's going to bless. <laughs> Catherine <laughs> Toon, hi. Hello, hello. How are you? It is good to see you. Good to have you. It is. 
It is good to be seen and it's good to see you. Yeah, yeah. It was We caught up a little bit before I hit record, but as normal, uh, I, I realize early in the conversation, I just need to hit record and we need to get going because we're already diving into the goodness of God. We are. We just can't seem to help ourselves. It's just a thing. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I was so good to see you in, in person a few months back or a couple months back in Louisville. Uh, with a, a Jamie Englehart uh, event. That was uh, so good. It was the first time face-to-face, and we, we got to connect a little, and then we were on a panel together, and uh, yeah. that was so much fun. But I love every time um, I get to connect with you. We're going to talk mm-hmm. about this. We're gonna, let's see that it's marked by love. But mm-hmm. um, I I uh I feel like whenever we talk or whenever I read you, it's like I'm I'm connecting with a sister or someone who grew up in the same family and kind of has the same language, the same dialect. Um, uh, the way you write and the way you talk about our Father, Holy Spirit, uh, and uh, Jesus is so familiar to me. And as I was going through this, getting ready, because you've you've revised or re. You've added, like you said, 100 mm-hmm. pages mm-hmm. to yeah. Mark by Love. Uh, are you calling it a revised edition? or i calling it, it's officially revised and expanded I, because re- it's revised and expanded. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> and as I was reading through it, I was thinking, man, she speaks the language of love. She, she speaks mm. in a way that my heart just resonates. And, mm. and, uh, and so I love whenever we get to connect and talk. And so I've been, I've been on your podcast, uh, yes. uh, Perspectives, with Catherine Toon, and mm-hmm. um, we've we've had you on the Rethinking God with Tacos podcast. Mm-hmm. So folks probably are familiar at this point, but let's start a little bit by sharing who you are, where you're, where you're from, what you're doing right now, and, and then let's dive into this book. Yeah, well, thank you. And I mean, it is joy. I'm just saying it's a joy. And I feel the same way. It's like we've, it's like we've always known each other, right? We've always been brother, sister, always buddies. (laughs) But but, oh, you're here now. (laughs) And then it was amazing to be able to see you face to face. There's nothing like face to face. So anyway, just a joy. Uh, But I will uh, dive in Catherine Toon. I live in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and I've uh, been married for 29 years, I have to count them, now uh, with my sweetheart, Brian, yeah. and have three uh, kids in their 20s. Um, and what do I do? Uh, I'm an author, so I did have written several books and a speaker and a coach. Uh, those are kind of the things that I sort of do uh, yeah. in ministry yeah. uh, and enjoy. I have my own podcast, Perspectives with Catherine Toon, uh, which is really a blast to do. And um, on the Grace Awakening Network uh, right. with my own uh, program there. So that's super fun. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else. But my, my mandate really is uh, I will always come from the place of connecting with God as the person of love and being yeah. the object of his passion and then revealing to people that goodness and the beauty of who he is yeah. and then him helping them see themselves yeah. through the eyes of love. Yeah. And uh, with that, it, your purpose is connected. So that's kind of my mandate. It, always, it will always eventually come back to that just yeah. because that's kind of my 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 dna and we resonate so much with that so it's so good yeah yeah it's, it's so good i uh the introduction to this book um i kind of went back to that I, I i showed you i'm almost through i'm impressed right? with your schedule we're gonna hit some like, i feel very special it's not a <laughs> dinky book so you're doing no, it's great not. it's you added 100 pages it's uh, <laughs> but it's really pages. beautiful and but i went back to read the introduction which you wrote and you actually used this mm-hmm. phrase how to get there from here uh which is yes. also a chapter title uh, a little bit yes. later but uh, it, it struck me because in my book or you can't get there from here and the whole the whole point was, you know, you, you know, when you're lost uh, back before the GPS and, you, and the phone, mm-hmm. and you had to stop at a, you know, at a gas station to get right. directions. And it, it always happened. I'd stop and I'd find an old timer, and I'd, I'd tell him where I am and where I need to get to. And he'd always start by saying, "Oh, son, you can't get there from here." <laughs> Which again? Me, 
<laughs> which for me was like, if I can't get there from here, then how am I going to get there? Like I never understood the, understood the phrase, right? Because I'm like, if I'm here and I need to get there, then I have to be able to get there from... There's a here and there's a there. <laughs> And if I use it as an analogy of uh, it's about getting on the on a you can't get there on this road. You actually have to step yes. off of this road, which yes. for me in that in my book was you have to step away from separation. You have to step away from mm -hmm. the, the the road of lack to discover your yes. union and his affection because that's the road that actually invites you to Absolutely. destination. But you are using that same language, and this book mm -hmm. is an invitation to to help us awaken. To, to the love of our Father, Holy Spirit, and Jesus. Yeah. Before we jump into chapter one, I noticed the structure. You, you start with the epicenter of love, mm -hmm. to find who he is in those first mm -hmm. chapters, and then get to begin to see who we are. And yeah. we go from there, which of course is the road to get us into this place of awakening to his love. But you also have us journaling. There's a lot of room for journaling. So maybe speak to the, the beginning of this, the invitation, because that's what you do. You're helping us awaken Absolutely. to and get to and yeah. discover his affection. Absolutely. And, and journal. You know, What's the importance of journaling? Help us. <clears throat> Well, the bottom line is that, I mean, I do have a lot of scripture and yeah. I do, particularly in the appendices, really do some deep dives into um, theologically. Um, and we can talk about that later. <clears throat> and, and I do get into theological things, but it's really at the end of the day, um, it needs to be real to us. The word needs to become flesh in us. Yeah. Uh, this this requires an experiential encounter Come on. with this God who utterly adores us. Yeah. <laughs> and the problem is we don't know how adored we are. Yeah. Uh, we don't know. And we don't and, and because we haven't seen him rightly, uh, because we've projected things onto God out of our own pain or religion has hijacked this gorgeous God. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's very hard to get centered into that place of his affection and come from the place of his affection cool. and his love and his his literal literal adoration he adores his kids <laughs> what will he not do for his kids come he who on. spared not his only son how shall he not paul asks give us all things that's pretty like ballsy, you know what yeah, I mean? It's like yeah. all things. Are you sure? Yeah. Like, okay, where's where's the disclaimer? Where's the little star and right. a bunch of stuff? No. Yeah. And so helping us get there from here is is really having the word become flesh. And I do this through encounter. So as you as you read the book and kind of encounter the book, it's not a book that's meant to be, you know, whistled through and check, 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 check and whatever. I mean, yeah. do what you can. I know people are busy. Right. No, I hear you. <laughs> but this is an ongoing encounter that once you get to the end of the chapter or, or a portion, it's not always at the end of the chapter. I literally say, okay, now we're getting out of learning and grappling and getting our preconceived motions maybe jostled up. I, a lot of times I use grammar incorrectly on purpose because I want people, wait, wait, what was that? Right. To stop yeah. and not do the gloss over we yeah. do. Yeah, yeah, I get that. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Um, <laughs> and then get, get into receiving mode, get into, yeah. okay, so what does this mean for me? You said, I was marked by love before I was marred by anything else. So what does this mean to me? That's, what is yeah. the marring? So good. And you, you talk about, you know, separation. You talk about um, desperation, yeah. right? These things marred your soul. So it was so hard to receive. Or, you, or you're, you're trying to receive through God, but you feel like you're underwater, all these things. And yeah. so, um, and just the junk that happens in life. Yeah. And then, so how does this settle with me where where, where the rubber meets the road. So we're literally journaling so that we can connect with the person of love, Father, Son, and Spirit, whoever, whatever dimension of Trinity that makes sense to you right now. God is so gracious. I'd be like, oh yeah, you need a, you can't deal with Father God. Okay, yeah, yeah, we'll do with Holy. No, you can't do, G okay, whatever. He's so gracious yeah, yeah. to help engage us because it's his passion to be known and for us to know that we're known. Yeah. And, and he'll come to you like, um, like a father uh, mm -hmm. in the shack uh, yes. who's, who's your, who comes as a mother 
I love it. Right. 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 Yeah. I, thank you, Paul Young. Yes. Thank you, Just Paul kidding. Young. Yes. Yes. Because love is so infinite, the universe has to keep expanding because it cannot contain them. This is chapter one, the epicenter of love. Love upholds mm-hmm. all things. Uh, and what you're talking about for me, the journey is, and, and, and I see the structure of how you've written the book where in some ways you are addressing some of the delusions or maybe, maybe you're not in that first chapter necessarily going after the heart of some of the lies as much as you're revealing how measureless his affection is, who he truly is, that no one is outside the parameters of love. As another quote uh, from there that this, I love the idea that the universe is expanding because because that is the nature of love that love is before and after the moment you think you get your arms around it it's it's bigger than that i think you use ephesians in that um in that yeah. first i i love i use ephesians often when i'm when i'm talking about the love of god because paul uh, that ephesians 3 16 yeah. through 21 because paul's basically yeah. saying hey i'm going to give you all these measurement words for love right. it's high deep right. wide long like i'm going to give it to you to be filled to the measure of the fullness of god those are all words measure of the fullness yeah. of god and then the very next line is and now to him who is able to do immeasurably beyond all you can ask or imagine it's like he's saying hey the moment you think you've got a measure the moment you think you can put language to his love it's bigger than that it's measureless it was before it's after it's holding all things together i mean this is the starting point uh, of 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 this book the invitation to maybe reset our lens to rediscover absolutely who he is uh Mm. I, I'm gonna, I'll quote this as life unraveled. This is you telling a story in the first chapter. Uh, he, yeah. he wore me down. Uh, you had talked about um, striving and you shared a little bit of your own story. He, I love this. He wore me down everywhere I turned. There he was so kind, patient. And then the last word and annoying. Yes. <laughs> Just love it. Because- you can't escape. Go ahead. Share about that. <laughs> escape it well the thing is you know if i went what because i had a honking chip on my shoulder and yeah. and for some reason and somebody's understand i mean like god is so compassionate in our yeah. chips okay he just wants to help us get past them right yeah. so such a chip and when you're mad at someone you, you really don't want to hear from them like there you are again right you know and right. like, but it is and it is so adorable you know uh i have a subchapter annoying relentless love because when i was kind of in this i'm a, I, I i was in my pain yeah i was like you know god it, it, if you're so good and so powerful what, how could you let everything i cared about be destroyed right and so i'm angry yeah and so in my pain i i think i'm running away from god yeah and he's just I'm right with you. Yep. I'm keep. I know you're mad at me. <laughs> when you're ready, I'm right here. You're so annoying. Stop that. No, I, I won't. I love you. I will annoy you yep. till your heart melts. <laughs> the chip gets filled in, and your heart gets healed, and you can resonate with who you truly are and receive my healing and restoration. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's a trustworthy love. Uh, mm. uh, later on, you talk about. Uh, it reminded me of a phrase. I'm see if I can find. It. I'm jumping ahead. It reminded me of a God who, who doesn't have an ego, who who doesn't need you to know His name. He's going to walk beside you. He knows your language better than anyone else. He's never going to leave or forsake you. He can be trusted, mm-hmm. and uh, and 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 it, it can be annoying, but in the way that uh, in the <laughs> way that it's got such liberty, right? Mm, yeah. 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 So, he just insists on loving us. It's just going to be a thing. Yeah. You know? For me, He's, that's the, if, if there's the greatest shift in my life, it was, it was the shift from a God who was distant to a God who is within. Uh, the kingdom just yeah, isn't right? a, a reach and it isn't some destination. It is an invitation right. into union. And that union is just an uh, ever increasing awakening to the affection, to his kindness, to his, to the perfection of his love. And, and and here's the here's chapter two the flavors of God, I, I love this. Okay, there's a song that I've been listening to lately, uh, where I get really emotional. Like every time I hear it, and Aww. it's by Regina Spector, and it's called Loveology. If you haven't heard it, 
you got to check it out. But the first line of, of, of this. We were chilling. Yeah, yeah. And because <laughs> you write about love all. So I'm going to give you the lyric and then I want you. She, but she's the first phrase is, oh, what an incurable humanist you are. And I feel like she's talking to God. What an incurable humanist you are. Yeah. And every time I get, I get emotional, I think, can you imagine that we know a God? He's an incurable humanist. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. And you have this phrase called loveology. Theology is the study of God. Loveology is the study of God as love. I love that you, uh, I hadn't put the two together. Maybe the first time I went through the book, I, I didn't have Regina's song. It's only a year old, but but as soon as I saw Loveology, I actually went and put that song on while I was reading through because uh, uh, of of what was going off in me every time I would hear that. Uh, to see you talk about Loveology is the study of God as love. Mm-hmm. I, I say I'm, I'm a relational theologian, but it's the same thing. It's, it's it totally love. Thing. Jesus revealed God as love, and that is the the hermeneutic, the method, the, the lens through which all things, and if he's love, then then he's an incurable humanist, if you will. But speak to... He is. Yeah, speak to Loveology a little bit. Yes, love does absolutely. not blush. You talked about that. Yeah. Yeah, love does not blush and is not ashamed. God, God is an incurably smitten with his creation. Come on. And he makes... No apology. He doesn't blush about it. He doesn't apologize about it. He doesn't wait till we clean ourselves up. We can't clean ourselves up without him. He's just smitten. And this is the one. You see, the study of this God, and sometimes instead of love, I'll use the word adore because sometimes it can be kind of sing-songy, love of God, yeah. you know, yeah. okay, got yeah. it, check. No, no, yeah. we don't. But uh, So this God who is so smitten with his creation that he's ever leaning towards. When I love this, that, that he's, an, he's a humanist, yeah. me, which is beautiful. Yeah. Like, we were his favorite thing. I know, I know. His favorite thing. I know. <laughs> and he wants us to know it. Yeah. Yeah. He wants us to know it. This doesn't give us a swelled head. It give us gives us a, 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 a head that is ra- rightly tracking yeah. because we've got to start from the place of his adoration. Come we've got to start from the place that we're all that in a bag of chips, <laughs> even in our, yeah. our mess. Yeah. And so he's relentless in that. So this is the one when we study this person, when we make it our our... This is just growing in the knowledge of God. Grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, according as he's given us all things for life and godliness, right, and invited us to partake of the divine nature. This one is where we, we get our source. And what's fascinating about him... And I do have a quote that says, "If you've gotten bored with God, you've gotten yeah. uh, you, you've gotten bored with the most fa- fascinating, yeah. most intoxicating person in the universe. God's love, too. it's intoxicating. Yes, yeah, it is intoxicating. So this is it's life as we start to grow in that." knowledge and it's experiential knowledge. I mean, it's everything. We get everything. I mean, I, I, I so love, I love theology, mm. but I love an experience of a person. That's right. Yeah. So this, this is why when we, when we move too far from the person of Christ as our center and then his, his truth of who he is as, uh, as love, light, truth, all of that, um, man, I, I start, I literally start to get depressed. I really do. I just can't move off of that. It's it's my source. So like, you know, and so this is the one that we're studying and, 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 and occupies the gaze. And then we can explore creation and one another through that lens and from that perspective. And it's beautiful. And and it's not a wishy-washy thing. Like you said, that word love can be boiled down and people can say, oh, it's, you're, you know, there's a lot of folks that... Um, navigate in the context of separation. They hear love and they hear us talking and they think wishy-washy. I'm like, no, this is a love that laid his life down. There's no greater love than one would lay his mm. life down for his friends. Mm. And this is what this is what he did. He stepped inside our delusion of separation. He stepped inside our mess. You, you talk about he is in our mess in this chapter. I, I, mm. us, the love does not blush. Love is naked and unashamed and infinitely accessible to the world he gave himself up for. It's a love that is powerful in that there is that God in Christ reconciled the world uh, to Himself, not counting our sins. He it, He He laid His life down for us, and so it's other centered. It's self giving. It is 
Mm-hmm. It's the thing upon which uh, everything is held together, but also the foundation upon which we can stand. And 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 I love what you're talking about that it's a felt reality. Yeah. Um, and 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 I, I I love that we're journaling along the way, right? You're inviting us to journal yeah. in this book along the way, uh, yeah. so that we can get past that left brain mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Um, didactic. St- you know, thinking and into yeah. that experiential uh, yeah. right brain uh, um, learning, if you will. Yeah. And I, I do talk about, like in, in my chapter, because a lot of this is about encounter, I do help people in the introduction with how to connect with God. Because some people aren't like familiar. And, and this yeah. is it's a boon for people who want to grow in this as well. But for a lot of the people that are thinkers and they're wired as brilliant thinkers, right. but just getting out of your brain and connecting in your heart so that the the truth that is true becomes experientially Come truth on. and that is transformational. Yeah. It just makes you fall in love with him all over again. Yeah, it does. It or maybe for the first time. Yes, and maybe for the yes. And it's yeah. and I, I you know I use this all the time but it's it's that Emmaus road Jesus who's going to walk beside you and reintroduce himself to you. And and he'll even be hidden or unfamiliar at least to you. And you might say we had thought he was the one. Well, he is, but it's better than you'd thought. And and so you know the, the reason I'm saying that is he opened the scriptures to them on that road on the Emmaus road. He 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 engaged head, heart, mind, body, every aspect of them was engaged. But it was after they were in the house and broke the bread that they went. Oh, did not our hearts. And so I feel like what you're doing is you're inviting, uh, inviting folks to steward that burning place that recognizes the truth, even if the revelation hasn't happened yet, even if we haven't come into revelation. That, that, uh, yeah. either and re- there are things that we know in our hearts that are true that we can't reconcile yes. in our minds yet. Yes. And so this helps you to, to stew in that place before you can connect the dots in Scripture or whatever. They're just things you know. Yeah. In your knower, yeah. uh, because that's where God is, yeah. right? And so this is that place where that is cultivated. And it also opens your eyes, yeah. right? Because, yeah. you know, Jesus presented as himself in a new kind of, it couldn't see him. And he presented, he unwrapped the scriptures. And then it wasn't until they broke bread. And think about this, until I recognize the symbolic place of you and your body broken from me, I couldn't see you and who you were all along and what that meant as we were journeying. So good. And so yeah. this is a God that's all in and holding nothing back. So good. Nothing back. So good. Yeah. And then uh, as you're navigating, chapter three, you go into Who Am I? There's a couple quotes I put down. You are literally a poem to the world cut out of the same mm-hmm. bolt of fabric as your creator. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I feel like as we're, you know, we get, we get to see who, who he is, that love is holding all things together. Then, of course, the next part of the journey is to come into agreement with how he sees us. And we've already talked a little bit about that. But there's some, uh, so love sets you free to be you. This is the kind of the, 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 what you're running at in this chapter. And then I, uh, there's the answering the yeah buts. I know, and you maybe know as an author, and you feel it in a room, or if you're interacting, you can feel where uh, you'll be connecting with someone, and you'll feel this back and forth, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you'll see them shift, and you you go, oh, there there was a yeah, but I mean, it's happened to me, where oh. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm unbelievably amazed by who he is, and it's too good to be, or too good not to be true, and then all of a sudden, right? it's too good to be true. A yeah, but comes right. in an experience or a lie. Maybe speak to to, uh, what you're running at here. Absolutely, because it's so good. And You know, when I started with this expanse of the episode in the universe, it's so sweeping. This kind of opens your heart, but then it kind of sets you up for maybe some yeah, buts, yeah, buts there. And then with, and then, oh my goodness, because he's all this and wow, and who am I? And wait, I look just like him in my flavor and, 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 and what is that? And so when God is revealing these things to us, we are so conditioned uh, in the world, in life, and by religion that, you know, we're not enough, that we're separate, right. that we got to try to work to be and try to do better and do all this. And um, and so when all this goodness comes in, the yeah buts come up. And that's where you take your yeah buts uh, to the love encounter breaks. 
Yeah. Right. So this is where I grapple with Jesus. I can't. You said, what What? What do you mean? You said I'm perfect. What? What, what is that? <laughs> you saw me. Yeah. What is that? I have a front row right? seat to me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you take them and, you know, it, it's 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 fine to have butts, but you got to put your butt in the right place. Right. Yeah. So all this crap happens, but God is good. That's what you say, right? God is better than we think, or I can't remember, but you have a really great way of saying that, right? But what happens is we, God gives us all this revelation about how gorgeous we are, how perfect we are, how much he delights in us, how proud he is of us. And then all the yeah, buts come And This is where our heart healing needs to happen. And so this is where we grapple with the person of love in in the journal space or wherever uh, that you're grappling it with, so that he can heal these things. Yeah. That he so after a while the yeah but start to silence. That's so good. Yeah. Because you're resting in his love. It's yeah. like oh I must be that. Wow. Yeah. I might like me after all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God is love. His love is always good, as Jesus reveals, and we exist to grow sure sure today than we were yesterday and sure tomorrow than we are today and on august 15 through 17 we get to grow sure together guys the rethinking god with tacos conference is quickly approaching we're excited about all the ways in which we're going to connect to the heart of the trinity and to each other we're going to break bread together or tacos of course I have great expectation for God encounters, people encounters, love encounters. Baxter Kruger will be there. Dove Alexander, Felicia Morrell, Brooke Waters, Derek Turner and myself will be hosting. I'll be speaking. We've got lots of friends coming and we still have some spots available. So August 15 through 17, you can learn more about the conference or buy the tickets and come join us uh, at a familystory.org. Family story dot org really excited about this our first conference and i can't wait to see you there And for me, if you want to know what faith is, it's it's learning how to live in the in the conviction that he's good regardless of the yeah, yeah but yes. It's it's mm-hmm. it's the uh, it's that place where on the other side of of uh, Peter swinging a sword and he's with Jesus on the beach, and uh, Jesus is asking for Do you love me, Peter? And Peter's unable to answer. Uh, because of the front row seat he's had yeah. to his own mess and to his own yes. insecurities his own and desperations yeah. and misinterpretations of the kingdom and the king and all of the mm-hmm. stuff that he'd navigated. That uh, he finally says, Lord, you know, on the third time. And then Jesus says, Peter, feed my sheep. And it's and at this point, there's this release of Peter. It wasn't the extension of your arm it was the revelation of my affection. If you remember, before he goes into the garden, Jesus says, I'm praying for your faith. Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I'm praying for your faith that on the other side of this, you'll get a revelation of who I am and who you are and that you can be life to, to your brothers and your sisters. It's To me, faith is, is, what you're, it, it is the invitation into the saying we have is, I don't know, but he's good as Jesus revealed. And, and it becomes something that you practice that then releases you into uh, peace, a way by which so releases you from yeah. peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, it's so good. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm this is good. Yeah. Someone write this down. <laughs> 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 Some, someone's taking notes, uh, but and I mean that's so true. And but uh, c- keep in mind too, and this will be a little uh, preview, uh, but. Part of this is as we're able to track with this love, we're also released into the purposes God has. Now, the purposes that he has um, are not what make us great. Yeah. They're what make us great is that we're his. Yes. And then because we're his, we're going to do great things. Yeah. 
them that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. When you know your God, you get to know you. And out of that place, it's like, oh, yeah, of course, as a byproduct, you're going to burp it out. That's right. You know, it, it's <laughs> right. It's a peripheral. Yeah. If you got to strive to do it, it's like, whoa, whoa, hold the horses. This is an extension, a, a byproduct of this revelation knowledge. And so so purpose is intimately connected with this as well. Come on. Uh, and that, and that y- y- you find that you're you're enough for it, not because, you know, you, you, you got self-confidence apart from him. No, you're confident because, dang, you did a good job with me. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. And good job with you. It's not a yeah. head swell. This is yeah. his kids. Yeah. yeah. I think that it fits with, so you've got the next two chapters are what's wrong and what's right. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Um, and love is unwilling to be, to let you be less than you were created to be is what you're kind of speaking about. We were created to do stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. So then you address the what's wrong, and then you you hit with what's right, um, which, Mm -hmm. you know, to me, uh, when I read read that, I went, oh, this is Prone to Love, which is is, um, one of the books that I wrote, but that we have been marked by, (laughs) thank you, we have been marked by love with the righteousness of love. We are supposed to be identifiable and famous for, for our love for one another. So it's the what's wrong, and uh, it's probably speak to that and then shift us into what's right, because this is what you were just talking about. You were hitting on we were created to do stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, well, I mean, what's wrong? I mean, we're, we're born in a fallen world and then it doesn't take us very long to track with our deficiencies and track with our yeah. failures and all the things that we think we're not. It's like Baxter Kruger says, the I am nots. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and so we, we start, you know, and 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 so the wrongness, I mean, you know, genuinely, we were born in a fallen world. And it's not like, hi, oh, can I sign up for the perfect world? Or can I sign up for the, fa- okay, no, I get it. okay, gotta go to the fallen world, right? <laughs> so there are things that, you know, and God knows this. Yeah. So because he knows that we're, we're born in this place and we're tracking with all these things and we have this sense of not enough or the sense of too much of these, all these, all these lies that we start to believe about ourselves and believe about, uh, uh, well, I, I didn't really go into to God that much. This is more about us. So what's what's wrong and how we're, we're feeling so deficient. Yeah. We're feeling, we're like Peter, miserable failure. Right. I denied the Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Like how low can you go? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, right. Yeah. And so we're so tracking with that. And so God is like, okay, no, I understand. I mean, we have to understand where we're caught up and where we're stuck before we can make progress, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so this is the flipping from the, you know, the what's wrong to what's right. There's a rightness about you. There's a, you know, we are, we operate out of, out of who we believe we are. That's good. Yes. Right? Yes. We operate out of who we believe. So if we're looking at the fruit in our lives and we're seeing all these sinful ways of being, addictions, compulsions, insecurities, unbelief, yeah. pick a card, any card. Yeah. Okay. There's a belief system. And a, and a way that we're seeing ourselves, that is off. And God is all about dealing with that. And, and you know, because we are so perfect and beautiful and complete in Him, God will always, as a good daddy, work to correct that because you're way too gorgeous. You're, you're way too amazing to be less than who you are. Come on. So this is not, this is a, this is a, an agreement, a, 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 a validation of your sonship and your daughtership. Yeah. Yeah. That he's saying, um, daughter, honey, yeah, that's, that's not working right yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. not worthy yeah. of you. Yeah, right there. Yeah, no condemnation, yeah. but it is a thing because you know we when we and I, I, I like I define love and there's a lot of different ways to do it, but in this, what's wrong is violating love. We violate love. Yeah, are we are commanded to love as He loves, and where we're not doing that, we are violating love, yeah. and so which makes it easy for me because if I'm trying, if I'm confused, it's like, is this like good or, you know, I'm trying to figure out, probably thinking of the tree, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but I've been trying to evaluate. Was that a loving response? I, I go back, well, was it love? Yeah. Or was I violating love? Right. And it's not so clear cut sometimes. Sure. There's a lot of gray. Sure. And so when we're retreating back to that, to what what is that, to get into the what's right, we need to track with who we are 
in the righteousness and purity and blemishness less okay I'm tracking. of who we are <laughs> <laughs> I'm tracking I, I, yes thank you thank you the vowels keep on coming the <laughs> syllables keep on coming <laughs> but that's who that's who we need to be tried as, as pure and innocent not that we haven't committed crimes against love but it's been obliterated. God yeah. came to obliterate sin. He didn't come to just to sweep it under and stick some blood on it and all of that. He came to obliterate that entity and that false identity because sin is more about identity than it is behavior, right? It's more about mistaken identity. That's yeah, hundred percent right. And I, and it's a. I love that we're we're having this conversation in the context of we actually are created in his image and likeness prone to love so we're not battling against um an i an i a sinful identity which is what i was raised with that we have the sinful identity of adam that somehow supersedes the righteous identity of Christ, as though we've always been an adam and have to somehow get into christ and so you're having a conversation in which we're actually uh we were in christ be long before we were in adam <clears throat> before the foundations exactly. of the earth. And so we're, we're having a conversation about um, when a crime against love is a crime against who you truly are. It's, it's stepping outside of who you were truly designed to be. And, and so mm -hmm. what, what our Father's doing, what Holy Spirit's doing is inviting us in, into a place of life and wholeness uh, so that we're not living uh, enslaved to any delusion, including some delusion, self-delusion about proclivity for selfishness or our, pro you know, the idea that if you're left in a room, you're going to do the, the worst thing, uh, left alone, you know, that idea that we were raised with instead of being uh, the righteousness of Christ and understanding that uh, righteousness, peace and joy is not something we're just attaining. It's within us. Absolutely. You know? Yeah, and we get to awaken to that because yeah. it's all it's all in us. It's all in us, and we are prone to love. Yeah. We are prone to be holy. Yeah. We are prone to be whole. We're prone to do beautiful things. Yeah. This is our proclivity. Yes. And when we're not tracking with that, we just don't know who we are. Yeah. And we get to repent. Yeah. And what I love is because, you you know, we have the yeah buts that leads into what's wrong, which to me makes a lot of sense because that would be a yeah but. You know, yeah. okay, you've said all these beautiful things, but I'm on the front row seat to Jason and I've been there when I had that thought or I've operated in that selfish way or whatever, whatever, whatever. And, and that can become... Um, well, it, it can become this thing you identify with as opposed to a behavior that's highlighting where, you, where you've misunderstood the nature of love, where you haven't submitted your life to love. Am I getting that right? Am I saying it in a way that... You're, I'm enjoying it. I'm, <laughs> I'm sucking the marrow out of it. It's so good. Of course. Yeah, just keep on going. It's well, these great. Are the, we have kids, and, and so it's easy to grasp it in that context, right? So yes. I, when I wrote yes. Point of Love, I, was, I, I used a lot of parenting. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. I'm, I can be a child as well, but, but you know, when you, when you catch your, your child in a lie... And this is one of the stories that I, I told in that book is, you know, the, when I was raised, you know, you might want to spend time telling them about the consequences of, of the lie. You know, you, you're battling with the idea that you don't want them to become a liar as though they were born to lie. Instead, uh, when you catch your, your child in a lie, you begin to reveal to them uh, how the Father sees them, how Holy Spirit sees them. Mm -hmm. They're a truth teller. We can have a conversation all day long about consequences. That's real. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, that, and that's part of your helping people get there. You know, this is the journey that you're, you're hey, let yes. me help you get to this place of mature love. But yes. you're not starting from a deficit. You're awakening. It's like this. When they handed me my daughter and I looked at her, I, I didn't say you can have some of my love and we'll see how this goes. It's everything right. I have is yours. Everything I have. Right. So then if Jesus grew in wisdom and favor with God and with man, he wasn't growing in favor in the way that we think he's got to get to favor, like he's got to earn some favor. He had all the Father's favor. He just grew in the revelation of it. He matured in the revelation of it. So you have all of, uh, all of his righteousness. You're maturing in the revelation of it. Am I, am I, am I, am I on a preach? Gorgeous. A gorgeous. And now you, and, and, you know, and you are holding your little daughter and sh she's just like perfect. Yeah. So of yeah. course, everything I have, everything I'm all in and holding nothing back. Yes. Right. Yes. And so, yeah. and, 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 and there's nothing about this little daughter. I mean, even the stinky parts right. that are, you just, they're just 
perfect. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's the- and and she's doing nothing. Let's be clear. Yeah. She's doing nothing but keeping you up at night and creating <laughs> lots of bad smells and crying yeah. and embarrassing you in public and burping up all over your uh-huh. clothes so you cannot have a professional moment at any time, <laughs> you know. And she's got nothing, but she's it's, it's your daughter. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Amen. And then we get to, we got to keep moving. Chapter six, the object of God's passion. I, I love this. Uh, God is smarter than our stupid. Uh, yes, thank God. <laughs> I'll set you up with this. I, I know you you touch on this and there's more here, but I, I've been writing in this vein. I, I think the church is coming into, and we're all in, in different places. So this is a 30,000 foot view, but. Um, This is my son or my daughter when Jesus is baptized, whom I love. This first part, okay, Jesus always called him dad, invited us into the family to live in the context of sonship and daughtership, to live in the context of friendship. So this is what's taking place here. The church is getting that. We're realigning with that reality. Whom I love, and I love like Jesus loves, a greater love that can be trusted, other-centered self-giving, right? And so you've got the church coming into that. And then there's this part here where I think uh, there's going to be an explosion in the quantum realm, if you will, an explosion in the, in the discovery with whom I am well pleased. Wow. How do we live in that revelation, awakening to our Father's pleasure? So the object of God's passion, that's what I was feeling while you were writing this chapter, inviting us into discovering his pleasure or Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and this is God's relentless passion for us. You know, you are, as I said, you're his favorite thing. You know, when you get a revelation of this, you, you start to connect with the infinite. Yes. There's infinite possibility. There's infinite um, power. There's infinite wisdom. You you connect with the quantum realm, and there's that's infinite. Yes. You're connecting with something that's so greater that you know we're we're trying to feel around the length, depth, and breadth, and height, and know the love of Christ, which Christ which passes mere understanding. That we're filled with the fullness, so we're getting the fullness. Oh wow! But it's even greater than that, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so you know this is us, and so being the object of that and connecting with that opens up. The universe that he created for his kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He created it for us. Yes. He didn't do it because he was bored and needed something to do. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Hey guys, interrupt him for a second. Glad you're here. So thankful for this podcast. Thankful to get to do this with friends. Thankful for Derek and all of those who've navigated it with us. Listen. This podcast is done under our nonprofit, A Family Story. Twelve years ago, I had a vision, and I wrote it down. I'm going to read it to you. Family Story is a relational community of creatives, family and friends. I see all of us as creatives. We do life together. We envision and express God's love through our gifting and grace. We are worshipers, dreamers, storytellers, and preachers, a family of dads and moms, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, united by a passion to know and reveal God's perfect love. I feel like I'm seeing the fulfillment of some of that vision 12 years ago. Uh, The mandate on A Family Story was to create media content catalytic for an encounter with the love of God. AfamilyStory.org is our website. I encourage you to go there. There's a whole lot of media content there. There's books and articles. uh, There's films, some music, and uh, this podcast. That's the home of Rethinking God with Tacos, which is pretty dang cool. It's been life-giving, as I said, the community around it, the community of creatives, of family and friends that's growing. uh, It's blown me away. And so I'm thankful. I'm thankful uh, for all the relationships, connections, and I'm thankful for all those who've given. Rethinking God with Tacos is listener-supported. If you'd like to support us, you can go to AfamilyStory.org. Uh, again, we're a nonprofit. And I would encourage you to join us on our Facebook group. Uh, follow us on Instagram, all the socials. Uh, if you're curious how to find me on the socials, it's at Jason Clark is. Otherwise, like, share, 
uh, write a review on iTunes or Spotify. Uh, tell your mom. We really are loving doing this, and I'm so thankful for everyone here. All right. It's time to get back to the podcast. I've used this often. When Jesus uh, comes down the Mount of Transfiguration, and uh, he, he, he's met by the Father with the Son who's been demonized. You know, he casts the demon out. The disciples at the, at the bottom of the mountain have been trying to do that. And so later they ask him, how did you do that, essentially? I, I'm bringing it up because you use language like infinite and measureless throughout this entire yes. book. Because, as, as we said at the front, the cosmos are ever expanding because love is an, an expansive revelation. The moment it's just you, trying to keep up. Yeah, it's just trying I'm, to keep I'm up. Trying to, I'm trying to do it. I'm trying to keep up. <laughs> I love that picture. And so you have Jesus coming down, and he says, you have too little faith. Well, that's a measurement statement that invites a question, well, how much faith do we need? And so it doesn't say they asked that question in there, but it, but it, 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 he answers by telling them, if you have the faith of mustard, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there. Nothing will be impossible for you. And I love that story because he speaks to us in the language of our understanding. So he's using measurement language, much like Paul in Ephesians. He's saying he's wide, high, long, deep. He's, you know, to be filled to the measure of the full. So he speaks to us with measurement, but then uses the smallest measurement to say, uh, this isn't the game I'm playing. Uh, let me invite you into a measureless revelation, much like Paul says, to be filled to the measure of the fullness of God. Now to him is able to do immeasurably beyond all. So basically what he says is, hey, this isn't about the measure of your faith. This is about the nature of my intimacy. This is about the, the nature of my awareness of our union. This is about me living in the fullness of the pleasure of my father, knowing his heart is my heart and my heart is his heart. This is me coming down from the mountain where I've just spent moments with him. And you're getting to picture what it looks like to live in the realm where all impossibilities are made possible because of the awareness of my union. You're getting insight into our intimacy, into the nature of love itself. And I feel like uh, this is the pleasure that he's inviting us into, to live from that place. Uh, 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 anyway, I'm, I'm on a preach again. but It's so good. Well, I mean, it is, it's always good, like, when you get a good preach on, because you get, because it's like, it's such a compliment. It's like, oh, I stirred something up with talk, just talking about my chapter. This yeah. is great. I love it. <laughs> well, that, I, for I love me, it. the object of God's passion, in the, when you begin to live in this, uh, what does it look like practically to be the object of God's, of God's passion? What does it look like? What does it feel like? to know his pleasure, to live from that place. I mean, it is such a place because people are so familiar with rejection. They're so familiar with, you know, just in the human realm of, of, of you know, all the negative things. But living from that place, it really makes you unstoppable because you are transcending. Yeah. Because love never fails. So if you're operating from that place of, of him as the person of love with you and his image and likeness, and you're operating from that place, loving as he loves and love never fails. There's always a way out. Nothing is withheld from you. Yeah. Nothing can stop you. <laughs> you you transcend it. Yeah. You know when you're. You know what is that? What is that like childhood thing? It's like the bear goes over the mountain, can't go over it, can't go under it, got to go through it, whatever. Well, I mean, God always. There's no uh, place where okay, so you're between a hard spot and a rock. Well, just just sink in the rock. There's going to be a way through some somehow or another. It makes you unstoppable because you are one with the one who is unstoppable. The one who is love, who transcended for us, as us, so we get to transcend whatever is coming against yeah. us. It's from that place where you get to rest yeah. and luxuriate, yeah. because love will love will heal what ails you. Love will heal a, a broken heart. Love will heal a shattered mind. Yeah. Love will love will heal. Uh, you know, finances that like, whoa, poverty, let love created it, chose it, and wants to redeem through his sons and daughters who know that they're infinitely loved and they're coming from that place. And so this is where when we, when we show up, it's even presence ministry, because when you show up and you have this revelation, literally the atmosphere shifts, the created realm uh, sort of bows down to the one and you don't have to say any, it's just because they recognize a son and daughter who knows who they are as a son and daughter because they're operating from that place of their father's pleasure.
center Come on. of the uh, that they're the object of their pa- and we all are. It's not like why well, get this and good luck, you know, have fun with your stuff. No, we all get this, yeah. you know. Yeah. And so and so this is how we literally are part of the redemptive story that God has for his beloved creation yeah. that just spun out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's it's an incredible way to live. It is, and it's fun reading what you've written and you know, it it, it sparks uh, uh, encounters. Really, it sparks encounters uh, or revelation, however you want to, you know, where you where you see what was always there in greater measure. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to keep us moving because we, I mean, we'll see if we can get a few more chapters because this is chapter seven is getting there from here, which is a shorter chapter. There was a one phrase I highlighted in a relaxed God. Yes. And um, I liked that. Uh, even in the context of what we're talking about. When Jesus says we can move the mountain from here to there, it was, I am in him and he's in me, and I'm going to live at his pace, and it's, I'm not striving to get left or right. Um, and he's, he's pretty chill. <laughs> he's a relaxed he's guy. He's so chill. <laughs> now, that doesn't sleep. mean he's apathetic. Like when no. you're in pain and horrible things happen, like yeah. he's like on it. He cares all of that. Yeah, that's right. But he's so masterful. He's relaxed. Like, I, I got this. Yeah. I got this. Yeah. You know, I, I, in that chapter, I share this encounter I had. I got in, I kept on having hell encounters, and I, I don't believe in eternal conscious torment, but there are places that are hell ish. And so, sure. how does God yeah. navigate you in your hellish experience? Yeah. And he's, let me tell you, he's, he's not flustered. Yeah. The other thing is, he's also not, um, He's also not in an all-fired hurry because we're freaking out. It's like, no, in our union, in that place of oneness with him, like, hell dissipates, and and, and you're literally walking in heaven. You're literally walking in the heavenlies, in this hard place. And you have lots of testimonies about how God walked you through, and you were just so at peace and things like that. And this is is how we get— Get to these places is identifying with ourselves as one with love who is masterful. <laughs> you know, nothing outlasts love. Yeah. Nothing. Yes. Nothing. Yes. And so, wow, this is who we're one with. Yeah. I mean, it's so rigged. Yes. It is so rigged in our favor. <laughs> and we just need to wake up to it, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then and then that leads us to freaky rest, chapter eight, because mm-hmm. that's yes. that's this place. Uh, you know, I talk about it a lot here. I'm fascinated by Jesus in a storm sleeping in a boat. Um, mm. Because I was so focused on calming storms, right. and and realized that the invitation into this rest is one in which the storm is neither here nor there. The mountain will be moved. I I am able to rest in who He is, and who He says I am, regardless of the circumstances. And this, to me, is some of that maturing faith that is convinced that his love is measureless. So you've started off letting us know he's good, his love is measureless. You get to follow him. You get to trust him. And in these places, in these storms, um, you're not impacted. Because first of all, he had nothing to do with it. That's not who he is. Right. And second right. of all, he's the solution. He is yes. bigger than this. Speak to that, maybe. And I know freak. So the solution is... Resting in the boat, I I do say, and I don't necessarily think it's in this chapter, but the big A answer came before the little P problem of the fall. Like he's that masterful that he's all that. And so this concept of rest, and I called it freaky rest because for me, rest was really freaky. Like you tell me to do something like, you know, triple A. I got fired when I was at one of my first jobs because they literally thought I was on drugs. Like literally thought. Right. Because I was so wired. We were going through a lot, and I was just wired. Right. And so the concept of rest was a very freaky concept. It also means that if we are having problems resting, we're having a problem trusting that we're safe yeah. and that we'll be provided for. That's good. And that one way or the other, it's going to turn out good. Yeah. Don't know don't know how it's going to work out, but one way or the other, it's going to turn out good. Yeah. Why? Because you're one with the one who works all those things Come out. On. And so this is entering that last. This is yoking in with the person of love who is unstoppable. Yeah. 
And it says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What are we learning? You're meek, humble, lowly. That means, oh, I came to serve. God came. This God of the universe, he was, came to serve you. Honey, what do you need? Let's, we're doing that. <laughs> this is what, this is about what you need. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm all about that. Okay. And then as we learn about that, man, anything we're called to, he does 99.99% of the heavy lifting. We do point. Zero one percent, right? So he t- he does the heavy lifting. Yeah. So if it's hard and 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 and, and heavy and yeah. whatever, this is we're not. I'm not saying that there aren't hard things, but in it we can enter that place because we're yoked up with love. Who's who has got it going on, Come right? On. And so, uh, so this is the place where whew, we can. And okay, yeah, it's it's going to be okay. Yeah. You know, ultimately, the rest means can I trust you? Yeah, it's, ultimately, it's so good. Right. That is so good, and that's everything. Trust is is the foundation for for all things. I, I got the picture of I still do it. My dad did it for me. You know, we both carry a board, and he's carrying it in the middle, and I got the end. You know, I feel like so I good. feel like I'm carrying the board, but <laughs> I got about two pounds to his hundred. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. I still do and, that for my son, even though he's six three, and he can take more than I can. I still. I still do that for him. So. Oh, you're his dad. I know. So your dad heart is like, let me take, okay, yeah, I okay, you need two pounds. I, mean, you're I got three, man. You got I got this. it. But- <laughs> <laughs> That's so fabulous. Uh, listen, um, oh my goodness. Uh, the, the, this last chapter, I didn't get to read. Uh, true, That's okay. True it's basically my testimony. It's basically like I, I, I share a lot of my journey in there. And so, and this is where literally as I awakened to different things, I realized, wow, um, in this place, love marked me with his faithfulness. Love marked me with perseverance. Love marked me with his graciousness. Love marked me with protection. Love marked me with healing. These are things because we're so marred by life just in our, our beings that the person of love gets to mark us with his essence and all its dynamics. You know, love is a multifaceted, every, I mean, there's gazillion facets. So what does that look like in your life? And this is where people can go back. And in this chapter, I really encourage people to go back and review, sit down and review, get that 30,000 foot view yeah. of where your journey has been with God. And, you know, I, I didn't know, I was not raised in a Christian home. So this is you guys were weird to me. <laughs> Life was weird to me. Okay. And then, of course, I got Christian. And then I got weird. And so all of it. So, um, <laughs> but but I could see from, I mean, from things surrounding my birth all throughout my life, how we, how I called it being marked. And this mark is like, God, you're having an impact. You're, trans, you're transfiguring me. So with your unis, yeah. with who you are. Yeah. And so this is where we see it throughout our lives and it interweaves into something so glorious mm-hmm. that also sets us up and prepares us for the things that he does have us for our, our purpose and things like that. And so um, it, it's a little bit more personal sharing, but also just encouraging people to see that because man, does it give you a confidence right. when you look back and you say, wow, and, th- and you, and you, and whoa, and it makes you fall in love with God because he's like, wow and all the time you were the, oh my goodness this how and you start to see it <laughs> yeah. the the blinders come yeah. off yeah and who you get to feel like wow yeah. i really am the object of your passion yeah. I really have always been the object of yeah. your passion, yeah. and even when I deser- deserved it the least. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. Deserved. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. A big, big quote. Big quote. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the, yes. I love yes. it. I love it. I um. And there's uh, uh, we you know we we really just scratched the surface because there's a whole lot of um, invitations, a whole lot of questions, a lot of scripture. You, like you said, the appendix is uh, is pretty. Uh, well, it fits the- it's really beefed up. I, I, I chose to do that because for some people in the first, uh, the, the original Mark by Love, which is still, by the way, on, uh, available, this is the expanded and revised version. Yeah. And I did that because I ran into so many people and even in my own journey where I was like, I'm so, I know God is love, but man, 
what about this hell thing? And right. what about wrath? And right. what about where it looks like you go kill all the babies and smash them on the rocks? Right. And, you right. know, yeah. where is, where, how does that fit? And I'm trying not to do violence to scripture, but the, the scripture is vi- doing violence to me. Yeah. So where does that, yeah. where does that fit in? Where does that fit in with our theology about justice and, and judgment? Yeah. And, and, and so, you know, if, if there's no eternal conscious court, that means you, you can just live your whole yeah. life and it right. doesn't matter. Right. How you show up and what violence you do to people, um, how does that fit? And just grappling with all these Quite things. So it's, a, it's more of a theological deep dive for the people that really want that. Yeah. And, and uh, it's necessary. I mean, I also have, uh, you know, journaling and a greater, a deep uh, contribution with, you know, other, other people to help, especially the thinkers, be able to connect with God. There's just a ton in the appendices. Yeah. But I, I figure people can go that want to do the deeper dive. Yep. And if you're good, then that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, I, I, it's beautiful because that's for me, I, I'm a feeler first. And, uh, mm-hmm. but then I'm so grateful for all of the thinkers who have, who have done the deep dive and then I get to navigate with them, you know, uh, this book, uh, among them now. And so grateful for that. Um, I love this book. I, I love this revised expanded edition and I'm thankful for you for writing it. And I do feel like we did get to uh, kind of work through it, but some of, at least of, you'd said before we hit record, you felt like we we're going to connect the dots. Yes. Uh, I felt yes. like uh, that was a good insight into this conversation. Yeah, that was so great. It's been so fun. So, you know, uh, we're, we're up in an hour, but we still haven't talked tacos, and, and that's a, a must. Or... Um, uh, do you have a taco story or do you have, uh, have I didn't I warn tacos. you. Tacos. Well, I, you know, I, I, and the first time I was on the tacos, I was really at a taco deficit. So I, I just want to thank you for the educational expansion in my daughtership in the realm of tacos. And you do know that God loves us because he did invent, have us invent yes, tacos. Yes. It's just, it's a reflection of the love of the Trinity. Um, so absolutely. So actually, no, I, I actually, I have to say after our last discussion with the tacos, I have been experimenting more with my tacos. Right. I, I realized I was taco, <laughs> taco deficient. And, you know, it was interesting when we, um, now did you have, did you have tacos at, at the, cause we went out to, uh, to lunch at the conference, we, right? We and I know you with Jamie and the and and the guys, because yes. yes. I specifically I just wanted you to know I could I could feel the tacos happening <laughs> at your table, and I was just reverberating and just repeating. So I actually did order the tacos, and actually I thought they I thought they were good. I I I, I you know as I said I'm not like a taco connoisseur, but um, I have been expanding. Right. So before right. I was just really into and you had actually uh, recommended that I try a I think it was and it may have been Derek that did this uh like a, a fish taco with mahi mai is yeah, that what it was yeah, one of those that that yeah. I haven't had that yet okay. and I was looking for it on I was looking for it actually on the menu and they didn't have no. it so I just want you to know I've been doing my due diligence <laughs> well we were in the midwest <laughs> though right kind of so Louisville, yes. not quite the Midwest, but it's harder yes. to find a good fish taco there. Uh, and it is. Probably in Colorado as well. Although, they're, um, you know, we can get it to you. But no, well done. Yeah, we had tacos that we had tacos with um, Jamie and that table with uh, Don, uh, Don Keithley, I think, was there. Yes. And uh, yes. a couple of other, Bill Vanderbush, a handful of folks. Right. <laughs> we had some good tacos. Were you, I forget the restaurant. I, I always, oh, Chewy's, was it? I it was true. Yes, yes. Yeah. Catherine, uh, where do folks find you? Where do they find the book? Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, so you can find everything at catherinetune.com, just my first name, last name, dot com. Uh, everything's on there. Uh, if if you go to my store page, which has all my uh, materials and things, it'll actually send you to Amazon. So you can go there or you can go directly to Amazon um, and, and purchase it there. I do have the old one as well. So you can choose which one you want. Um, uh, I, I personally, if, if you're into a, a, any kind of a deeper dive, you're going to want 
to get the new one, yeah. but the old one's great too. So we decided to keep it because a lot of people said, don't, don't take that away. I'm not taking it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adding, I'm expanding. <laughs> so, I love yeah. it. So, that, so you can find me with that. Uh, my podcast, Perspectives with Catherine Toon, is available on all major platforms on YouTube. Uh, and then uh, Grace Awakening Network, uh, same, same title, Perspectives with Catherine Toon, but it's fresh content that you don't get anywhere else. So oh. there as well. So, yeah. That's good. We, we're, we're doing that on, on, on the GAN network as well, but uh, we had to start with some older content, but we're starting to add some newer stuff there too. I love that. Love that you're there. Uh, also, you have, I think, uh, on your website, the first chapter free as a download. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's chapter six, Object for God's Passion. It's actually oh, it's the original, six. so okay. it won't be the updated uh, one. But yeah, that I have a lot of freebies. Yeah, like, do. take yeah. advantage of yeah. the freebies. It just makes me happy yeah. to be able to uh, to give people free stuff. We all like free yeah. stuff. And then um, YouTube channel, obviously, that's free as well. Uh, so yeah, feel, please, please check all that out and grab a hold and run and share with your friends. Love this, <laughs> love this conversation and connecting with you in this way. So rich. So rich. It's, all, it's such a joy, Jason. I, I so appreciate you. I love you. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Awesome. We'll do it again. Yay, around tacos. At some again. point around tacos. Oh, we need like that. That needs to happen. Yes, Absolutely. I love that. Awesome. I love that. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the podcast. If you'd like to learn more about the podcast, myself or our guests, you can go to afamilystory.org. You can also go to afamilystory.org if you'd like to give. This is a listener supported podcast and we are incredibly grateful for your generosity. Hey, we have a Facebook group and it's pretty cool. Uh, Rethinking God with Tacos. You can join us over there. Lots of incredible conversation and community taking place on that page. And you can also follow us on all the socials, Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube, and others. Hey, I'd love it also if you uh, went on iTunes and left a review or shared or tweeted or liked the podcast. Uh, let your friends know that this is a good place to hear about the love of God. I pray grace and wonder over your day.